So I'm, I'm judging this show. I, I don't remember exactly which city it was, but it seemed like the lights just kind of blocked out. Like someone was blocking out the sun. So I turn on my left shoulder, and it's it's uh, Dennis James and this huge guy. So I'm thinking, well, you know, is he, is, is he the guy from Yugoslavia or something coming in with, with DJ? DJ would always bring us international athletes um, around to, to introduce. I said, who's this big guy? You know, this massive guy. You know, and then he, he got a little closer and said, ah, I don't mess with, I don't mess with him. You know, and uh, but anyway, fast forward, trying to find out this is the biggest teddy bear I've ever met in my life. <laughs> most humble. And I don't think there'd be a, any time of the day or evening if you reached out to the gentleman and said, hey, I need, he'd already be to you without even finish the, the sentence. Um, I've been very fortunate to, to become closest individual. Uh, we're going to do a lot of things business-wise as well as on, on a personal level. But uh, what a story from start to finish. Um, you know, we're so quick, or, or at least mainstream America is so quick to stereotype. When they see someone looking a certain way, whether it's clothes or tattoos, hairdo, how they speak, walk. But I wish there was some kind of indicator showing heart and love for the world. Because it's it was, you know, it just wasn't as synonymously obvious, you know, that someone this big, this massive, this mean looking could be so nice and loving. So um, I'll start to tear up a little bit. I want to bring you uh, Mr. Mel Chansey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to tear up. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Um, first, I want to say, like, you know, me coming out and speaking at these workshops uh, is so awesome to see you guys as the athletes take full advantage of this. You know, back in the day, you know, when me and John were coming up, we didn't have this, you know, if you got up on stage, you competed, and win, lose, or draw, you got off the stage, and you walked out. You didn't really have a chance to talk to the judging, you didn't have, a, you know, this, these opportunities. So, what I like to tell everybody is, it's awesome to see that you guys take this extra step to do this, because it, it really pays off if you guys get hands-on with, you know, some of the top pros, you know, district chairmen, Olympia judges, it, you know, I tell everybody, you know, when they ask me for the advice, and I say, if you haven't worked in your area and stuff, go to it. Be part of it. Get to know people. Get your name out there. And it really helps out because, like I said, back in the day, it was it was so different. And like Dan said, it, it is different times. The social media and everything gets crazy and people get wrapped up into all that. And it's good. It, it promotes everybody. But you have to stay true to what got you here, you know, what got everybody here and what everybody's working for. So I like to say that, you know, it's awesome to see everybody participate in this. And, and, and take it as far as they can. Um, which brings me to another thing that I see a lot of, um, humility, you know, staying humble. Um, when I first came around the sport, like Dan said, <clears throat> nobody really talked to each other, you know, back in the backstage, you know, the Mike Matarazzo's didn't talk to the Branch Warrens, it was like, it was almost like they were at war. <laughs> and I used to be like, you guys are putting posing trunks on, you're going out and posing each other, against each other, you don't hate each other. There's no rivalries like that, it, was, it wasn't, as friendly as it is nowadays, you know. So, you know, I tell everybody when they ask me for advice, I say, stay humble, stay true to yourself. What got you here? You know, I see so many people through the years that were a flash in the pan. They came through the, the state levels. They won a state show. They, you know, came through and won a national show. And three shows later, they turned pro. And one year later, they're, they're not around no more. And, uh, you know, they let the egos and everything get the best of them. So. From what I see, as long as I've been around this industry, what works for people is to be true to yourself and stay humble. You know, remember what got you here, the drive that brought you here, and don't get hyped up on the, you've got 50 million followers on Instagram, and it, it, it's easy to get, you know, sidetracked in this day and age with that. So it's just, uh, you know, that would be the best advice that I could say that I give at these work camps, you know, and just talk to the judges, talk to everybody. It's great, you know, Pete's here, and. He's been doing this for a million years. I don't want to <laughs> put nobody out there, but he's got many, many years of history. He's a photograph. I've got the antique sitting here. 
we were only 40 people, but I mean, you've been doing it for 40 years, and I mean, there's a, a lot of history, like 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 East Coast, you know, with Steve Weinberger and every, you know, the bombshell and the work camp started, you know, and and now I, I come and see him, I, I come to some work camps, and there's eight people there, and I'm like, God, this is the state of Florida, there's so many people, like, I mean, I've been here a year, and I'm learning about the shows, there's so many shows, and when, you know, when I got granted my show, and I had talked to Pete, and Tim, and we were looking at dates, I'm like, there's not an open weekend here. In the state. I mean, it's so it's so awesome to see that so many people are competing. It's it's many people call me up and we talk about stuff. It always comes down to you know staying true and being humble and don't let your ego go home because you know nobody knows what's going to happen. No one knows who's going to be the bikini Miss Olympia, the next Mr. Olympia. It's not set in stone. It could be anybody sitting in a room. So I tell everybody like remember all that. You know what I mean? And stay stay true to that, and everything will be good. You know so. That's the advice that I could give, and you know, I don't really know what else to talk to you guys about. But I think we know who's going to be the next uh, Miss Bikini and Lip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, does anybody have any questions for Big Mel? Uh, like the South Suburbs, like Orange and Tinley. Is that? Oh, okay, right over Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. It's nice, still love Chicago, That's but really cool. it's yeah. nice here. Can't beat the weather here. And, well, plus, like I said, Florida is so it's so packed with competitors and, and the shows and every you know the year, a little over a year I've been here. And I'm in all the shows and arenas next week, and they're just where you can see the passion that's here. You know, I travel all over, and you know, I work with Jim Manion right now, and so I'm getting to see you know all the big shows and all the state shows, and it just seems like Florida it really has the passion down here. The guys like Tim and Pete and that are, are putting out everything for everybody. These camps, you can talk to them. The first time I met Pete, I surprised uh, Tim at his Hurricane Bay show, and I got a chance to meet Pete. And me and Pete were standing over to the side talking for 30, 40 minutes, and the athletes were coming up, and you know they're like sorry to interrupt. And Pete took the time with them, and you know we just got off head judging and stuff like that. It don't happen everywhere. And, you know what I mean? I don't know if anybody competed in any other states, but sometimes it's just. Uh, it's not. You guys got it good here in Florida, so to say. You know, I don't want to rip on nobody else, but a lot of a lot of states don't give the time to the athletes. You know, you want to talk to a judge or you want to talk to the chairman. It's like pulling teeth to do it. But here, you got everybody to talk to, and it's nice. So you guys definitely got you know one up on a lot of people in different states. You know, so. I'll just say this about Mel's very humble about the way he speaks of himself. Um, I will tell you that earlier when I was talking. Is this even needed in this room? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Earlier, um, I was talking about staying close to um, the reason why you started. Um, Mel knows what it's like to be down here and to be up here. Mel is an example of the kind of um, forces that are in this industry that really inspire. And I'll be honest with you. Like, Mel's a guy who you get to know his story, and um, he's very humble about it. He'll get up here and he'll talk to you like he's, you know, just a regular guy. The Mel's story is remarkable, and it is inspiring as hell. And as you go through this, there are folks out in this industry, and for some reason this industry seems to be a magnet for extraordinary people who have had extraordinary journeys. And I will tell you that if you're here throughout the day, pull Mel aside. Get to know God, get to know Mel, Karina as well. And there, there's some incredible stories here, and these are the kind of people that you want to stay close to, because when you start to look at the negative side of the industry and the part that makes you not want to wake up and do it again every day and all that sort of thing. I know for me that when I'm in a place where I feel that way, I, there's a short list of folks, and Tim mentioned that earlier, um, and Mel was you know, right at the top of that list, the people who kind of remind you why we do this and why we're, we're in this space and why we're in this community. Because there's some folks like Mel, and I hate to, to keep saying it over and over, but it's, it's a remarkable story, it's inspiring as hell, and get to know that guy because he is he's as cool as they come and he will remind you um, he will remind you the realities of being down here and being up here and every single day he makes it his life's purpose to inspire and to motivate and to get people through situations and um, and I just felt like I know he wouldn't tell you that about himself but I, I felt like I wanted to because he's exceptional. Thanks. Thank God for it because that's who taught it for me. So, you know, I 
to spend nine years in federal prison. So when you lose your freedom, you know, you're used to just thinking of all the everyday stuff we do in nine years. Think how much we do in a week, let alone nine years. So that was, you know, uh, that's what I call it was God's second chance for me to wake me up. Like, that was his time out, like your bad kid sitting in the corner. <laughs> Mine was for nine years. And <laughs> but I think I'm every day for it, you know what I mean? And there's, there is so much negativity, not only in the industry, in our world. I mean, we see it every day and stuff like that. So it's so hard to try to overlook that. We get caught up in it. I do every day myself. I, you know, I'll be in, you know, I live in Florida and I'll be in Florida and I'll be sitting in traffic and I'll be mad that I'm stuck in traffic. Then I get that thought that comes through my head and said, you know, I would have killed to sit in this traffic, you know, nine years ago. So it's it's easy for me to be re reminded of it because I have all the years of sitting in that eight by ten cell, wishing I could go out and pour some concrete or sit in traffic or fight with my wife or whatever the deal is, you know. So you know that's that's why I go back to like just staying humble. There's you know in this industry you have people around you and they're knocking you down and oh you're never gonna get that pro card and. You know, maybe who cares? Somebody doesn't always, they don't know if you want a pro card, if you're just doing it for yourself, or so many people I see that are like, we just like competing. We were 70 pounds overweight. We could care less about the trophy, but this is for us. That's how you gotta do it. And I, I, I kind of like live life like that. Like, do what pleases you. And the negativity, you know, you don't have to be rude to the people, but I just, you just try to stare clear of all that, you know? So I appreciate that, Dan, too. Thank you. That's awesome. So, Hey, Mel, uh, talk about the training, because, you know, you and I have been around for many years, yeah. and you were yeah, training. I started, I started when I was 16 with the, with the weightlifting and the bodybuilding, and, you know, I, I, I didn't really ever think about competing. And, uh, you know, when I was 19, uh, back in Chicago, I joined the Hells Angels, and by the time I was 22, I became the leader. So, back in that day, in the, in the you know, 1992 and three, you know, I was making a lot of money, of course, illegally doing that, so... Thinking about competing wasn't even in my in my you know head. You know, I, I went over and did a little wrestling. I got to become very good friends with Hulk Hogan, and I wrestled with WCW for like a year. But at the time, they were you know paying me 160 grand a year, which is a ton of money. But I was making 10 grand a week doing what I did. So that 160 grand a year was like ah, I don't want to run around the country and beat my body up in a ring. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. So, but I always loved the training. Always loved lifting the weights and trying to get big and to see where I could take my body. And uh, when I was 19, John's a handful of years older than me. You know, I met John and he was, you know, training. He was big back then, and he was the guy to to work out with in the gym. One afternoon, he came up to me and he said, uh, "Hey, you have a training partner?" And I said, "No." And he said, "You want to be my training partner?" And I said, "Man, absolutely. I was like the break I was looking for until I started training with him." <laughs> I remember one afternoon we were training back, and I, after like the, I said, John, are we just going to pull everything from the floor? Can, can we go do some pull downs? He goes, Your back sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you can do some pull downs in a couple of years. Start that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I stayed, we, we stayed partners for years, and uh, it was crazy because my body grew. When I mean, uh, if you guys look on my meeting, you see pictures of me and Matarazzo, me and Jay Cutler. And, were the exact same size, and I just was tattooed up and <clears throat> never really had the passion of hitting the stage. But I loved the training with the weights. And through them years, I became a lot of people's training partners, from Mike's to Jay's to Dennis James to Dennis Wolf. I mean, Jay used to bring me out to Vegas, and I'd stay with him and Kerry, and I would train with him for the last 12 weeks before the Olympia. I'd stay at his house and train with him, and you know, we'd eat, he'd die, of course I wouldn't. At nighttime, he'd go to bed, I'd go to the strip clubs. <laughs> and all he asked out of me was to make sure I was in the gym with him twice a day, and I did it. It was awesome. So I got to train with some of the top guys and, and, and learn a lot. And another thing is, like, I always say to myself, you're never too knowledgeable to learn. Here I am, 46 years old, trained with the top guys in the industry, seen all different types of routines, everything, and I'm still learning stuff to this day. And I might learn something, I only gym that I learned something from a 25-year-old kid that he's seen. And I'm like, damn, I've never seen that in all these years and stuff. So, you know, keep your minds open and, you know, don't, of course you can't. Like Dan was saying, there's so many gurus, who are you going to work with? Who's doing what? Who's counting macros? It's very complicated nowadays, and I know it's overwhelming for everybody. It's overwhelming for me. I don't even know what the macro is. <laughs> but everybody's got a different <coughs> philosophy 
and it's easy to go to different spots, but you know, you got to do what works and, and, and keep your mind open and take a little bit of what you see and try to get it to work for you. You know, I was, I trained hard, ask John, I, you know, once I, once I did that, when I was, even when I, when I was in a motorcycle days, you know, I didn't drink and I, I didn't do no drugs. I took some gear, of course, you know, testosterone and stuff, but I didn't do any street drugs or anything, so it was easy for me to stay focused. And once I seen the way I was growing, I got up to 290 pounds, you know, I was like, and everybody used to say to me, you need to compete. <laughs> Never am I dying and eating some fish. And, <laughs> but I did, I did. I came home from prison and, uh, you know, Jim Manning and Jay talked me into like, you know, do some shows. And I did a show and I went to Illinois State. I was already 38 years old, so I was a little older, you know. So then they're like, go to nationals and started dieting for nationals and like three weeks out my body was like this is not me. I just got sick I just was it was not for me with the diet and it wasn't something that I did all my life so I said I just I'm just gonna stay training and love the passion for the weights and stuff and I'll leave the, the diet to everybody else you know so it's been a long run I, I, I love what I do I love the industry I love the, being around the good guys with the passion because like you said there's a lot of people that they don't have that drive and passion, and you're surrounded by all that. You've got to kind of weed through this sea of the mess and stuff, as I call it, you know. So it, it's just been an awesome journey for me. So, you know, I'm always there for anybody that reaches out. And, you know, me being very tight with Jim and helps out with a lot of people because a lot of people are nervous to, like, go talk to Jim and you know, they want to ask him a question, and he's the, the, the best guy. He'll answer anybody. But a lot of people <coughs> will call me up. <coughs> Athletes will call me up. Flex Lewis. Can you call Jim for me? And I said, you can call Jim yourself. Flex, call him. You know, he's, he'll take your call. And so it's awesome that I get to be a part of this now. You know, uh, me and Tim have our first show uh, uh, over in the Port Charlotte area on October 28th and 9th. I'm super excited about that. And, you know, meeting Pete and just, and, you know, with Dan and the years that I spent with these guys, it's just awesome. Now it's all coming to light. Now I can put my passion into it with our shows and being at the state shows in Florida and get every show that I possibly possibly could be at, you know, that I'm not traveling all the time and stuff. So it's just, it's, it's been a long run and I'm just grateful for being here. But like I said, with you guys, it's awesome to see you guys coming out, taking full advantage of this because, you know, it's here in your backyard. Why not do it? You never know who's sitting that is going to be the next Olympia winner or, you know, what have you. So it's awesome. My, my congratulations to you guys. Thank you. you guys, we were traveling down uh, 75 South between Sarasota and Fort Myers. Uh, go to Second Chance at Portland, Maine. Second Chance Gym, that's Mel's. Nice. Oh, I'm the